cover that well and any other successful wells on his land. Um, and then he, his, I think his law department has sent that back, and we've got that in, I think Joe's reviewing that. We need to get um, Abby to look at that as well. So that, that's got some possibilities. That looks like a good well. All indications are it's some, it could be as much as 100 gallons a minute. Um, but that's under review. Well, I mean, just the well drilling's been real slow. Uh, yeah, exceptionally slow. But we got places to drill, and uh, I mean, it's gonna take time. But I'm confident we're gonna have many wells over the next ten year period that are gonna flow plenty of water for hushed. And uh, you know, Blazerton has nine wells. Um, they're using six right now. So One's a guthrie though, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, 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 100 gallons a minute. That's 300 a minute. It's up there. Um, <laughs> there there's two big ones that are about 150 gallons a minute. How many do How many do we have right now? Well, we've got two. Mm -hmm. uh, the one down at the ballpark and the one on White Street. And the one on White Street's been there since I was here. Mm -hmm. Very well. Yeah, it's it's great. And there's one that's covered up right there in Town Green. That was the original. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's covered up. Um, Jerry, how many gallons is a cabin, <coughs> cabin Creek well? Cabin Drive is um, about 40, 44, 45. Not too bad. It was already drilled, so it's very worthwhile to, uh, to, to go ahead and develop that well. well. Our goal is to find something, what, 51, 52 gallons per minute? Right now, I would say it's not real feasible to uh, develop a well, unless you're in Helen, for uh, under under uh, 75 gallons a minute. Talk about it. And y'all all know too, we, we buy water from Jackson County, we buy water from Brazil. Okay. And what, the, the Jackson County deal is up for re renegotiating? For it is. I don't know if they're going to send a new contract um, because of service delivery, I don't think any of the cities have gotten new contracts for them. I think it expires in May. The Winders want to sell us water? They are. Yeah. Well, I think you're at a very good, and this may be a good time to drink into that discussion. Quite a good contract. Ma'am? Winder wanting to sell us water. Yeah. 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 yeah, Barrow, Barrow County really wants to sell water. Barrow is probably, uh, I think that's how as far as purchase water, I don't want to turn anybody away. I'd like to be hooked on to everybody I could be hooked on if I were y'all, as Brazelton is. Um, Barron's probably one of our best prospects right now. Uh, they're, uh, they're one of the partners in the um, Bear Creek Reservoir. Uh, they're about to expand that uh, water plant from 21 to 42 million gallons a day. Uh, right now, Barrow has an allocation of about six NGDs that sell about half of that. Um, when that new plant comes online, they're gonna, their allocation is gonna be 12 to 15 million gallons. They need to sell water. So I think uh, that's a very promising, As a matter of fact, they came in and met with us and gave them some data. They're supposed to be coming back to the city. But I think that's a very good promise for competitive rates and longer term contracts with Barrow County. How would they hook into our system? We're already hooked into it. At Mulberry Bridge, it's an old line, but we're, Lime we're Lime hooked into that's Lime 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 Yeah, but Barrow's on. Uh, Doesn't that cover bridge? Bear, Bear County system ends on 211 there and uh, Old Hog Mountain at the roundabout yeah. that far side. That's so still hard. in proximity. You got a line right there at the, at the bridge. So I think either Barrow or Andor Line is going to be a good source. But with your new tank, your elevation of your water system is going to be at 1085. Um, Jackson County is at 1066, and then they had such head loss there about 1040. So Bear County, I mean, the Jackson County water right now will not fill your new water tank. And you have asked them to uh, lease their old pumping station they had down on uh, Jackson Trail Road, where you could just re re reconfigure that with new pumps. Your tank. Um, Are they not using that at all? Okay. 
nice building, nice site, uh, but they won't lease it. Um, they will allow you to upgrade the, put up, fill all the pumps and all the telemetry, all the electrical in there, and then turn it back over to them to operate and charge you for operations. After we pay for it. Yes. To upgrade it. But that's, that's been a stalemate for about a year now. But if you get winding water, or you, if you get Jackson County water, or if you get Barrow, you're going to have to boost it. Mm -hmm. All three of those are going to require some boosting. Not a whole lot, but some boosting. But you do have about right $400,000 from the uh, SFR grant to build your booster station. But you don't want to build three. You want to build, you want to do one yeah. somewhere. So that's a, something that's really kind of a moving target for us right now. We have a good opportunity with Barrow. We'll have to boost that water. Same thing with winding. Jackson. So Jackson County wants just to make some money off of that pumping station there on Jackson Trail Road and they do, they do all the work and they even maintain it and profit from it. Right. Yeah, I mean we we just didn't get much cooperation. It's just sitting there. Nobody's yeah. using it. Yeah, nobody's using it. It could have been there, but I, we got other solutions, yeah. and at least we got some money to assist with that. That's right. We've got plans if we do continue primarily with Jackson County, we would um, build our own booster pump station there on the Indian Industrial. So I think in the next, in the coming months, probably in the next three to six months, I think. Um, You'll have a good idea of what we can expect out of Barrow or Jackson. Um, but I, I would still stay definitely hooked on to Jackson for sure. So to fill our water, our existing, our brand new water tank that we built now, we'd have to fill it with Rappleton water, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the tank at the south end of the city would have to be have to have a booster pump. No, it'd be the same the elevation. Same the elevation. Once you get it to 1085, you're going to be great. I'm with you. The other possibility is if, if Bradleton did some minor upgrades um, and the primary, primary source was from Barrow, Barrow would be getting the system into the lower zone of Bradleton, 1085, saying here, you can wheel all your water you buy from Barrow to that uh, to Bradleton. Now they could have That'd be the simplest solution, that would be. Just uh, all day long. Healing. Yeah. You can give them a minor healing fee to go through their system. I had a boost problem. It cost, we figured, we did an analysis in, in Raven County, for instance, they have to pump water three times to get it up to the mountains. And we figured their cost was about 35 cents per thousand gallons just for the electrical cost. So we figured it kind of like wear and tear on the pumps and everything, you're looking at 50 cents a thousand for pumping water just to move it. And those booster pumps are how much? Well, yours is not going to be that bad because you're not lifting like a rail oh, pump. It's only 200, you know, 200 feet of head. Yours is very minor pumps. Uh, you know, they're probably 10 water tires in there. And see, once you top your tanks off, they shut down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we have at home? A lift you station. You mean the new tank? No, the lift station. It's a different. It's a different, oh, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. The water supply, I think, you know, we've got a lot of possibility. I feel, feel a lot better about the water supply than we did six months ago. Because mm -hmm. um, Winder's going to have a surplus. I'm not saying that's going to work out. They've got that big um, uh, joint venture project. Auburn and Winder are using the quarry for a new water plant there. Um, they're going to have an abundance of water. Well, where does that stand? I mean, how far are they from going in there to the river where we met with them? No. Putting that dam in there. Well, they rethought that project. Rather than flooding 200 acres, they're going to have a very small um, offer dam and a deflection um, structure, and they'll only be able to withdraw when the river's up from a big rain or something. When it's you know flowing in its shallow depth, they won't be pumping any water. But they're trying to acquire, get permission to survey and acquire some of that land in there. I think they've got a lot of pushback on it. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a hard road. <laughs> Yeah, the public relations from the get-go is a little yeah, off. Yeah. It's hard to get that back. Does Auburn not buy water from Barrow County? 
I think they're buying pretty much from Wanda right now. The, the fun thing with Barrow is um, several cities cut Barrow off about three or four years ago. Barrow was subsidizing their debt service with SPLOS funds that allowed them to artificially depress the water rate. When the SPLOS funds left, um, they raised the rate to 515, and that's above anybody's hope for a while. They were pretty well cut off. So they've been, they're, they're way down on water. Statham's not buying from them, Alden's not buying from them, Bridalton's not buying from them. But with the, um, the water surplus they're facing now, they're really interested in human you know, food customers. Wow. So I think your water supply, um, you got so many possibilities now we didn't have you know, six months ago. I still think, well, we will we'll, we'll develop some wells. Uh, if you look on this next this chart here, that kind of shows you where your water uh, supply has been coming from. Uh, 2016, you were buying most of it, of course, from uh, Jackson County and a little bit from Bridleton. And then in, in 18, you got your, um, well, I'm sorry, 2020, you got your wells on. So you see, your, your wells are very important piece of that. Um, but as you grow, right now your 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 well supply, your groundwater supply, well supply is only about 150,000 gallons per day. So we want to see that come up. Possibilities, um, of course, on Blankenship, on Coal, uh, Hudgens Land. Um, there's a map we'll look at here in a few minutes that has um, some uh, areas we really need to look at down the road as far as. Um, Potential for uh, groundwater is concerned. Some of it's on the um, Fulton property that's still held by Hog Mountain. Hog Mountain. Uh, I think we've talked to them, but there's a few things that are kind of barriers to uh, getting in there and doing the exploration right now. Uh, the other one is just off of uh, West Jefferson. And then there's some over on the map property that could be possible. Again, we're kind of res restricted in our zones that we can put water in because we're. So small. Um, but the well that we're kind of exploring, it's, it's what we don't have the casing for. There is one well that looks like about 100 gallons a minute there, so I want to do a good risk. And that's on the purple property. It is, and it's on the very uh, southern tip. I think there's some of the land they're going to be donating to you right yeah. there. It was right there close to the Paul's, right? 117 acres. Right. Right. Well, well, I have the White Street. Yeah, I, I didn't know they'd taken it out of service until, you know, about the time I came into office and they were just bringing it back online then. It had to be reworked, man. Yeah, well, you know, we probably lost it back. It's in bad shape. Um, had some operational issues. Um, pumps going down there. So, that's what I'm trying to do. I did half the water. Oh, I know. That's, that's exactly, yeah. If it, if it's we should have off of that compared to buying it. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it's the most definitely the way to do it. You're in the 60, 60 cents or 70 cents per, uh, per thousand gallons with, with groundwater. You're paying four times that much from a wholesale. You can, wells are expensive. I, you correct me if I'm wrong, but by the time we find a spot, put a well, drill it, hook it up to the system, mm -hmm. close to about 400 grand. Be with piping, but, if you find it. If you, yeah. but once you get it all done, you've got me. You know, but you may try three or four places, and by the time you get one running, maybe 400 grand in. Mm -hmm. But look at that White Street well, I mean, it's really been used for probably at least 50 60 years. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. I mean, they will pay themselves back oh, yeah. fairly quick, Absolutely. and I mean, and it's. Mm -hmm. Everybody turns on a faucet every day. Tell me somebody in here that. So they explored three wells on purple. Maybe just one good one. I think they just did two. Just two. Just two. Mm -hmm. I guess that's 20. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, it is three. It is three. Yeah. Yeah, I think
think at the time we, we concentrated on the purple lane and the blue lane. Yep. Water gold right now. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it is. Very pretty thing. Very pretty. So looking at your um, briefly at your um, historical water and sewer fund and revenue expense. Um, go back and go go back to 2011. You were. Uh, a million dollar year system now you know close to five you're doing very well you know, very solvent good good revenues good operations um, you'll see uh, what we call um, one-time expense that's the uh, capital projects you've done in the last two years with your tank wells and all that most of that's been Paid by either grants or connections that you should really have. You had some borrowings on the uh, White Street um, wastewater uh, wastewater pump station abandonment. You had some debt on your uh, your wells construction. I think y'all have already paid those debts off. trying to get these easements for a solid year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little over here. Oh, yeah. We can work on this. We, 18 or 19. Our job number on this, we started, this is one of our projects when it first yeah. came to Houston. It's 13059. It's a project number. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's hard to believe when you try to help mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the residents in that subdivision mm -hmm. and you know, some of them just ran to us and signed these things. Here it is, please, let's get at it. Mm -hmm. And then you get some people who are just like, oh, it's not like we're tearing our house down. We just want to put a line underground in your backyard. Didn't you offer something to them? 
Yeah, there was a requirement to pay on a certain It is. Fair market value is absolutely. Mm -hmm. But most of those easements were fifteen hundred dollars maybe? In that ballpark, yes, sir. That's how really insignificant it is. But you know, the ones that have had issues with their grinder pumps, they had no problem signing no. the request group because that's awful when you it have is. those after. So our last activity there, the plans are ready. We could essentially go to bid right now. One thing we wanted to accomplish since we have talked to uh, radio and some others, we have a concern for our trench rock. You know, we'd really like to quantify our rock. We don't want to get halfway into this project and come back to you and say, we need another $200,000 for rock. We don't want you to either. So we found, <laughs> we found, I'm trying to get the microphone. I have found over the years, my clients do not like surprises. So, so, Try to minimize those. So we did find some new technology. We're, we're going in there with the uh, old traditional method of drilling down to the, where the rock was, but we found a, uh, I knew the technology existed. We finally found a company that would do a seismic refraction and we'd go in there and do a rock profile on all our lines. Mm -hmm. So when we get that back, basically those will be brought into um, the CAD drawings of your sewer system that will be implanted right on the profile. That way you can very easily determine the number of cubic, amount of cubic yardage we'll have for rock excavation. And at that time, we're going to completely re-estimate the project. That was estimated two years too much. Yeah. Wow. So we're worried about the increases in cost that we're experiencing everything now. Uh, plus fuel, and I wanted to quantify that rock where I want to come back to this council and say, our, the estimate in 2018 was like $900,000 for this project. Mm -hmm. uh, we got current bids, I know. The moment, Shannon's grimacing here. Um, yeah, I'm kind of dreading it too, but I want to know what that is. We need to, we need to know what that is. We need to know what that is. You know, if we could bid it in that first two years, I think we'd have been okay. But times are very, very different now. That's 600,000 to build up the farm. We got some of them charges. It's like that was going to cover most of it. I know. Now it's not going to cover anything. So, looking at some possible action items here um, on our water supply, we know we want to investigate additional well sites in our primary zones. Um, and I think I want, there's a there's a map which we'll look at a little bit more. A lot of those are a little bit out of reach, but I think every one we can get into. We need to continue to explore with uh, Cole Hudgens' property. Let's see what happens on Blankenship. Um, there is a very uh, very good looking uh, rock formations. I understand in the along the Mulberry River in the Holford development is still held by uh, Hog Mountain. Uh, whenever we feel it's appropriate to approach them again. We did one time, but we, they wanted to get a couple of things behind them. Um, and that's, that's, that's the one you see right here, the cobalt plaza. There's some about halfway up the Mulberry um, in that development that is in flood zone, that is undevelopable property, that they're very interested in uh, doing some well exploration whenever you think we can approach them. And then continue for, uh, negotiation with City of Winder. You know, committee, the more people you can have your system hooked up to for emergencies or whatever, the better off you are. Um, Winder does have water. Continue working with Barrett County. Um, I think we'll start seeing numbers from them within the next two to four weeks. We'll start dialoguing and talking about that. Jerry, back to Winder. Sure. You mentioned to me that the week next to them on the bridge down here. That pipe leaked really bad. Yeah, yes, sir. It does. To my knowledge, we haven't bought any water from Winder in decades. That's so. correct. That is correct. Okay. So I'm guessing there's a valve on the other side of the bridge. It's just cut off there. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Probably yeah. wouldn't be too much for us to reconnect the Winder, cost-wise. Yeah, I think or, honestly, uh, if you go with Barra or Winder, I would relay that line probably under the river. That bridge is, is on schedule to be rebuilt in the next two to four years. So you don't want to attach to that bridge and reattach another line there. You have to tear it out. Because the 
what we find now is, I mean, there's places all over the place where we've actually uh, done directional drilling under rivers. Uh, there's pipes all over Brownsville that have been under the river for like 20 years and never had any trouble with them. But if we bought from Winder and Barrow County, mm -hmm. we would run a new line for 211 from Barrow County down to the river. Mm -hmm. Would we make, would those two maybe come to a point there and those some separate meters and then we yes, just sir. have one line going? Absolutely. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We just put a big enough line to know that we yes, can take care of that down mm -hmm. the river. That would be the way to go, for sure. Connection of those. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a lot of security. It is. It is. And both have a lot of water right now and will have for the next projected for 20 years. That gives us four, four water sources plus our wells. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The future leadership of Houston needs to yeah. Yeah. Just keep hanging yeah. at wells right. forever. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all need to remember that. I mean, if, if, if our forefathers had kept after the wells the last 50 years, we wouldn't be having this discussion today. Yeah. 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 Land would have been easier to get back then. They hadn't had the truck. Yeah. And wells were sure enough a lot cheaper to drill. Oh, yes, they were. Yes, yeah. they were. Absolutely. I've drilled many of them and hooked up the houses for $5,000 a piece. Yeah. That were 600 feet deep. That's right. Yeah. Which I can't help but go back. I think y'all submitted the city of Houston a letter. 2016 saying you need to start now. Correct? Yeah. I think you're on the right track. We're looking at all possibilities right now. Everybody we can purchase it from and looking at every well site we can get as we can get to them. Um, so I think you're on the right track there. You know, I don't, you know, I think we still want to be hooked up with Jackson County. Uh, I don't know how those talks are going to go. Again, you're going to have to boost water from somebody. Um, if you did the dual connection with Vera and Winder, you still you could still build one booster pump for both of those sources. Where would that be? Like at the bridge at uh, Jackson County? Oh, Peter, Peter Street. Or Peter Street. Yeah, Peter Street. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah negotiate a little bit of land there on the uh, south side of some coal fields. You know, there's property tax out there. Uh, and I think you wouldn't need much. Really, you yeah. wouldn't need much. size this room. Really to the most. Yeah. That's right. About half as much. Yeah. Half as much. Yeah, and it's not like they can use it. It's right there next to the river. Exactly. Yeah. Very good site for that. Um, water conservation measures. I think you uh, adopted a, uh, was it a mandatory uh, Water conservation plan, EPD, nature do. Uh, I think your your water rates are set up conservation wise. I think your water rates are fine as far as encouraging conservation because in Houston, the more water you use, the more expensive it is. So you've got that that uh, component in there, a conservation water rate. Um, I think we need to. I think we've talked about this. We need a monthly report showing how much we bought, how much we produced, what that total is, and how much we've invoiced to the customers every month. And we think council would we like to see that every month. And over time, that'll give you, you just did your water audit. I'm gonna ask Fletcher to explain, to translate that to us. But um, over time, that'll give you what your true water loss is. What is that? We don't really need it. Yeah. And then again, start tracking our trends with our uh, per capita water use per customer water use. What that is, where we get a real good handle on what is a what's that what's that real number. Um, so, in this next next slide here shows you uh, just a, it'd be a little thought provoking. If you look, that's your that's your water and sewer service area. Um, so we're doing a lot of planning primarily for a culture primarily for the old parts of Houston. Uh, but we've got quite a bit, I think there's about 1,200 acres or more south of Coulter. Um, there's got a, two big chunks of uh, property that Hudgens owns, and there's the Kennelly Farm, and there's a, uh, everything in green is basically right now Houston's responsibility to provide water and sewer for us. Because those are, there's a lot of undeveloped property south of what's going on. 
but to see if it trends wrong, that's going to um, you know come up for some sort of development. Yeah, Jerry, I, I look at that right there, and I, I want to think, you know, far when we're talking about what our ancestors should have done for us. Right. You know, you look at all that, if it gets developed, let's just say even 20, 30 years down the road, mm -hmm. you know, where's all that sewer going? That's right. I'm not so much worried about the water as I am the sewer. I know. Most likely it's still got to go to mm -hmm. the Mulberry River. Right. Or well, that however, basin, for sure. However clean it's got to be. That's right. You know, we ought to be talking to some of these people now uh -huh. and buying enough property to put a plan. That's right. Because we all know in 20, 30 years, it's mm -hmm. going to be more expensive than it is today. Oh, yes, sir. You're right. And mm -hmm. you can just roll that in as the cost. Uh -huh. I agree. And it's just thinking ahead. I mean, like right now, you know, we've got the next site already bought, purchased for the uh, next water tank. Right. A million gallons. A million gallons. Mm -hmm. You know, we worked on that a year, year and a half. We got that done, but well, I mean, it, it's like once you got that thing deeded, it's like There's okay, we're nothing. ready to go build it whenever we want to. And, Good you know, move, absolutely. And, and it was, you know, it wasn't hard as some things are, but still, it's it's nice to know we got that piece of property to go to work on. Absolutely. And sure. you know, and I thought, are we going to need another water tank down the road? Mm -hmm. Probably will. And. Um, We've got that piece that we got from uh, Anthony right there on 85, mm -hmm. 85 53, mm -hmm. and Main Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we can put a water tank there. So we, we, we've kind of got some good water tank yeah, sites already. We've we got two mm -hmm. paid for ready to go. Mm -hmm. and I, They're harder and harder to get in any community now. Because sometimes. you need the right spot for them. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And, and if we're going to dump the the Mulberry River seems to me a plant closer to the river. Mm -hmm. I agree. That'd be a long-term plan there. Uh -huh. Go ahead and get the land. And I, I know uh, a couple of nearby counties are having a terrible time getting uh, wastewater plants cited. Can imagine how Nobody. much oh, yeah. more trouble that'd be down the road. Oh yes, sir. Well, yeah. What would we need? Ten acres. Twenty would be better. Twenty would be better. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, no matter how much it costs. The good thing is, is in places like that, you know, you usually can't, you know, you're not developing subdivisions. That's right. That's right. So there, it's kind of a win-win. Right. But you got to have a certain elevation even for those because uh, you just can't put those in like in a floodplain area, right? You can. A lot of them are. You just got to get all your structures above them. Look at Bryce. Above yeah. the level. That's yeah. right. I mean, Bryce is right there, right there yeah. at River Road. Oh, yeah. Most of the ground comes in the floodplain, but all the structures are built up. They're fit like what the field, the grain field, or whatever they do. Yeah, all of those old drip fields are not used now, but except for to grow hay. But all their, their one reason they have all the land is they had a big spray field there, and they took that up. Kind of like y'all had the pond. Yeah. They're using that land now. They're very fortunate to have that much land. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of wastewater plants in the floodplain. We're just uh, playing accordingly. We need, we need to start that. That's true. We, we, we really ought to start that. I mean, I can just imagine what that land's going to cost down the road. I mean, that may not be the, you know, out of a person's sewer bill, 10 cents a bill. Right. You know, to pay for it, to start paying for it now. And have it ready to go down the road. All right, service delivery area, even though they're not in the city limits, mm -hmm. we still have to provide them with that, right? Yes, sir. We have um, it's kind of a, the city, not you, but the city has agreed to that based on previous SDS negotiations. One thing to consider, and I don't know if this is a good time or not, but if you, if you look at, um, the, especially the southern end, uh, you have the properties kind of to the Mulberry side of 53. Mm -hmm. Does it really make sense for the county to serve that side of the road and y'all this side of the road? You're, basically, you're, you're, you're going against what service delivery is all about. You're almost duplicating service because both entities would have to have a line down 53. One serve this side, you serve that. that does that make sense? Is there some properties, since we're in negotiations on here, are there some properties 
who freed or swapped, and that's been done in Jefferson a lot and in Robinson a lot, it makes more sense um, feasibility-wise for, we'll give this to Jackson County and we'll take this to Houston. It makes more sense for us to serve this and you to serve that. So we have that opportunity there. It kind of looks like it may be, especially on that southern end. Yeah. Doesn't Jackson County and other come all the way to... Um, 253 there at uh, Bill Walker Drive? Probably. Yeah. Because they have that subdivision that's right there on, mm -hmm. um, yeah. kind of right there across the Muddy mm -hmm. Lake. I, I yeah. believe it's, a, it's, on, it's on the county line. Probably. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're, yeah. they're small enough lots. It's not a headstone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they on Sampson? They're on Sampson. Yeah, yeah. There's no sewer. You know, no sewer system. There's lots of sewer systems. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the, I mean, the county's already there, water wise. Mm -hmm. I would guess that the county is servicing. As you turn on Bill Walker Road, all those there on the left, mm -hmm. the county is up. They're actually servicing those for water in our service area. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was my thinking. Of, if they're not in the city limits of, of Houston, what do we, I mean, we have to provide them services if they want city of water, city of sewer. But at this point, we're not getting anything. Right. Nothing from the county. several subdivisions mm -hmm. in there that, mm -hmm. that I think it's funny because you know a couple of those have been built in the last yeah. the last year or two. And I think on the right hand side of the road too. Yeah. It's been a but, big subdivision. But this but all this is there. Yeah. It just gets me that they're down there servicing mm -hmm. our customers. Right. They're in our delivery area, even though we don't have a line in there. I'm sure there wasn't any kind of IGA done on that. Right. Anyway, that's something to consider. Look, you know, look closely at their service area. And I know Bronson's had two or three areas where they swapped. That's where it made more sense. I don't know if there's anything that y'all, you know, have in mind to. Uh, Yeah, I see some ideas there. Okay. All right, any more questions on the service area? Anything? Okay. Let's look at the uh, next slide and let. Um, Nice pleasure. So this is our first water audit. What you um uh, <clears throat> very first one, right? Yes, ma'am. Once you got to a certain customer level, that triggered uh, doing an annual uh, certified water audit. So uh, talk to us about what you're, what you're telling us. Yeah, so so well this is giving us a baseline of the information that Houston has first received um, as far as completing the first water audit. So the information that we have in front of us, while it does provide data for us, we, we don't have any historical data to compare it to. And, and that is one of the main processes of completing the water audit as you build this historical data to, and make improvements to your system. So this first audit provides some useful information as, as we go forward each year, uh, we'll be able to gain a better understanding on, on how the Houston water system functions and operates in regards to the amount of water that the city produces, purchases, and then redistributes um, within their metering system. And essentially what this is, and, and the requirement from EPD, is that they want water utilities to operate on the same basis as the city operates their financial resources. Um, the city is required to have a third party audit done of your finances to ensure that you are managing the citizens funds appropriately 
Well, EPD is now requiring those systems that generate um, and produce enough water to do the same, the same process. Because in essence, this amount of water that we were just talking about, and that heard reference minute, the water is gold. And um, that, is, that is acknowledged and recognized on the, the state level as well as the federal level. So they are um, requiring systems that implement procedures and processes to make sure that you're managing the water that, that is allocated to you appropriately. Um, and then in addition uh, to that, they're ensuring that you're managing the finances of that water in the same, the same fashion. So that's what this audit is. Uh, they require a, a qualified water loss auditor, a koala. Um, our officers to, to get little koala bags carried around. I don't know if y'all know that as being a solid enemy, but um, they take they take heart to that. Um, so these these qualified water loss auditors that they, they come through the city as they did the Houston, they request a lot of information just like your CPA would um, looking at the finances. Um, and then compare this data. So if, if you look at the page that's provided in the handout as well as on the on the PowerPoint, what it's showing is, is it's showing where you where you fall within key performance indicators for your finances as well as your water. And if you uh, if I can just direct you to the first uh, column there or, or box on the left hand upper side area, you will see that the city of Houston has fallen with a data validity score of 65. So again, we had no historical data to compare this to. While, so while 65 is not a 91 to 100, which is where we would love to be, um, I, I could not tell you how many water audits we have completed since this, this has become a rule um, 10, 15 years ago, but we have completed a lot. I have yet to see a water system fall into that top tier of 91 to 100. Um, so the goal would be ultimately to be in that 71 to 90 um, uh, tier, and, and I, I will tell you some processes that the city can implement in order to, to fall within that tier. But I will say that a, a data validity score of 65 for the first water audit is very good. It is very good, actually. Um, and so what, what that does is that shows you how you are managing the amount of water that you have as well as your finances. And if, if we can just fall over to the right a little here, and see, look on these key performance indicators. Some of these numbers, don't be alarmed by them, um, but they, they fall into the category of, of looking at total loss cost rate, apparent loss cost rate, and then real loss cost rate. So that total loss is, is giving you the, the total losses of apparent real losses. The real losses are amount of money that, that the city's losing for water that they are they're treating and the normal operation of the system. For instance, there's times that your, your, your water utility employees have to flush water for maintenance. Um, uh, if they're disinfecting a line or if they have a water break, um, EPD requires that the, the line be disinfected, that it be flushed and that you collect microbiological samples. So that water has to be flushed out. Um, tank maintenance, there, there's many different processes that require water to be lost, if you will. Um, there's a cost associated to that. And we're flushing a lot of new lines. And that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're setting up yep. a lot of these these different processes. And so, so if you look at that, you'll see that that's twenty six dollars uh, and ninety one cents. Um, it referred to connection per year, um, which is a real loss. Um, that 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 number is not significantly high. While it, it might seem like it is, it's it's not. Uh, the apparent losses are losses that. We don't, we can't directly tie to a true cost because we're, we're not really associated with them, but it could be leaks that we, we don't know about. We, we know we have some water loss, we know we have some leaks, um, and those, those are there. Um, however, we just can't grasp them and have a, a true cost on them of, of what those are. So they're apparent to us, and that's a cost, and, and those combined gives you that $32. So when you look below on the next two areas, now we're talking, uh, we're, we're getting away from, from dollars and we're looking at actual gallons that are being lost, per se, if you will. And then we have the apparent and the real losses are still connected to the same criteria. So we're looking at, at 37.5 gallons per connection, 1.1 gallons per connection with a total of 38.6, um, which gives you your, your unit real lo uh, losses in gallons and it's expressed in complete miles of water lines that the system has and you're looking at 2,314 gallons 
uh, with an LI, an LI, an ILI index, which is an infrastructure leak index of 4.1, um, which puts you in the 90th percentile, uh, which is not, it, it's favorable for the system. Um, so with all those numbers that, that we see, the basis of this uh, audit is to make improvements as, as the years progress to ensure that we're, we're managing those resources appropriately. Um, so to, to give you some roundabout numbers from what was actually shown in the, in the actual audit itself. So for, and, and again, we're talking about 2021, so a, a calendar year of 2021. The total amount of water supplied was 109, a little over 109 million gallons. So that was 33.8 million, ga 33 million gallons of water that was uh, produced from your own sources, your wells. And you had 74.1 million gallons that was imported, which gives you 109. Out of that, um, you build, you accounted for that you metered 83.031 million gallons, and you had 2.4 that was unmetered, um, unbilled, unmetered. Um, so that gives you an authorized consumption of 85, 85 million gallons. With that, you had um, 20. 3 million gallons of total water loss and 26 million gallons for the year of non-revenue water. Non-revenue water means water that you did not incorporate and receive revenue from. That's the operation of a system. That's an operation of a system. And they take that value, they divide it by the length of mains with a, a factor that they have. Uh, the city of Houston has approximately 26.9 miles of water main um, with a little over 1,600 service connections, which gives you that that ILI number. Um, so if you look at that, that gives you that total cost and that ranking that we see of 65. So with that, um, out, out of this water loss uh, audit that is completed, it establishes and provides recommendations in order to improve the score uh, of the system. And some of those are to establish and revise policy procedures for data collection. Um, that would be incorporated within your utility part, department to ensure that those numbers are accurate and being stored properly. Establish ongoing mechanisms for customer meter accuracy testing, active leakage control, and infrastructure monitoring. Um, one of the mechanisms that can be established and one of the key components of being able to account for your water is, a, is, is making sure that your water meters are reading accurately. Uh, the moment a, a water meter is placed in the ground, then the first gall gallon that flows through that meter, it becomes inaccurate. Um, and the more it's in the ground, the more water that registers, the less water it's going to account for. So after a period of time, based on a percent of accuracy, it's deemed that meter needs to be replaced because you're losing the accountability of water and you're losing potential revenue. After how many years? Because it doesn't matter. Right, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Um, each, each meter operates uh, independently from each other. Um, and it's based on how that, that meter itself was, was manufactured, but it also has dependency upon the corrosivity of the water, and particulates are in the water. I mean, we're treating water to a high degree, however, all the particulates are not removed, and water by itself in nature is corrosive to some degree. Um, so it, it starts to wear the inside of this meter out, and all that's inside of it is a plastic, what they call a plastic mutating disc. And it turns, and it turns a piston, and turns a little dial and gives us a reading. Um, so while that mutating disc can become more over a period of time, it, it just doesn't start functioning properly. So in general, um, the, the rule of thumb has always been between eight to 10 years and a million gallons. However, we've seen meters that after three to five years are, are more than 10% inaccurate. Um, so they're only measuring 90% of the water. Wow. That given period of time, Depending on that customer and the amount of water it's using, it would be advantageous for the city to replace that meter. So the only way you know this is to go out and, and do what they're recommending, is to do customer meter accuracy testing. So you have a bench top uh, device where you just go out randomly and you pull meters out from customers' connections. So then this little bench device that has a known quantity that measures it. For instance, if you just had a five gallon bucket that you knew measured specifically five gallon bucket, you know, you didn't use just an elastic pickle bucket for the five gallons this mark, you actually measured it. Ran five gallons of water through the meter, 
So it measured the five gallon mark, measured before and after, and then you can determine how accurate that meter is. And then based on those, and you just do random ones every month or every quarter, depending on the size of the meter and then the size of the system, but then you can make a determination on how many of those need to be tested. And then you actually have that data, and when you're doing your audit, you get a higher score because you're doing the accurate needs uh, testing, and it increases your data validity score. Hmm. Good thing here, well, first of all, with the growth, all these new subdivisions, they've all got brand new meters. Mm -hmm. And we've been in the process of changing out the old meters mm -hmm. for the last, I don't know, at least a year. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we stand with that, but you know, it was several hundred meters. And because uh, I know there's, I think I saw bills for them this week. But last year, I remember there was one check for almost $100,000 just for the meters themselves that we were replacing. So we're going to be in pretty good shape for new meter wise, I think, across the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Ours should be more accurate than most people's. Mm -hmm. all, all of ours are so neat. Okay. Did we have to replace a lot of the switch over to our computer program? That's right. That's why I had to do it. And you said we had 1,600? Web service connections. Yeah, service connections. Yes, sir. Yep. And remember, not everybody that's on water is on service. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you got me. Me. Yeah, mm -hmm. careful that. Oh, yeah. Y'all need to get on board. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to. Y'all need to start paying. I mean, that's expensive. You thought we had this with twice. We need that revenue. We need that revenue. We need that revenue. service lines, some of the service lines leak, you may not know it, but underground been there for 60 years, have new service lines going to the customer. 
and all that old stuff will be taken out. And then the next phase, phase two water, will get rid of the, just about everything that's over 40 years old and have all the new, new stuff. That'll, that'll bring it way down as well. And this good that water goes out in these subdivisions and these new lines flushing. Oh, yes, sir, they do. Uh, that is a lot. I realize. That is a lot. And y'all know, I don't, y'all may, y'all all may not know, but Brad arrested a, a guy last week mm -hmm. for stealing the water from us mm -hmm. in a turf truck, a tanker truck, I saw that. down off a of pearl industrial right. water. Mm -hmm. What was the company? Something like that. And a big truck with the company's name all yes. over everything yes. right there. I think we found out that they even had a uh, an office in Houston, like a business location, no business license. Oh. I mean, it just keeps they getting bigger. Yeah, and the meter they were using when they said was, was but we think it's a really old one. It's a second part of that. Wow. Yeah, that's that we saw them or we came to the first time. There's no time having But but we I mean we got charges. Seriously? It'll be one of our first court cases there. Somebody from Creek Cycle. But you gotta give it to Brett and Brett for they did a little stake out in college. <laughs> I mean, like, almost like the next day, mm -hmm. you know, somebody had said something and they went in there and kind of wow. hit them that call, call them red handed. Yeah. You see these white stories. The guys were like, well, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. Uh -huh. I didn't know. That's right. Boss told us to do it. They know. They know. Yeah, they know. 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 You know these white storage tanks you seen landscape and frame. Yeah, I'm just thinking how much what's it cost? Two hundred two hundred and eighty-three gallons. Yeah, what's it cost? Two hundred and eighty-three gallons. Eight a gallon water for eight pounds, I don't think. So eight point three four pounds. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they filled it up twice, so <laughs> yeah, fill it up with the house by a dollar. Yeah. What you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you want to look pretty how many times this is. Well, and that's true. true. You would be surprised how often that happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do it with yeah. They used to do it. Contractors are looking to it. Pick up your meters. Sure. Uh, uh, oh, Brad says, you know, you, they, they'll go down through uh, like Twin Lakes or something like that. And you can tell them they, they've just taken a PVC line and gone to the meter and got duct tape wrapped all around it just enough for them to wash or irrigate or whatever they need to do. He said, you'll just go through and you'll see the duct tape. He said, you know, some of them takes the dirt just to get it off. That's how waterproof they make it. And good old duct tape. But they'll just tape a line to the, to the, um, where the meter goes. The meters aren't even in yet. The uh, curb stop, mm -hmm. to the curb stop. And they'll, they'll just pull a line or a hose to it and just tape it together. Yeah, but they've seen that many times. He said, I can tell you how many water hoses I've collected. If you need to borrow a water hose, I'm sure we've got plenty of them there. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, has everybody signed up for automatic payments for y'all, your water bill payments? Mm -hmm. We just started that. I raised. Reached this two years ago when we were finally there. Yeah. Yeah. Can we went on up? I asked her another day about it. She says, we're doing that now. Filled out the application this week. I don't trust my meter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure you get a new one. Because when we put the new one in, you're going to pay more. Because yours is one of old ones. It's been out. It's been there a long time. Right. Yeah. Yours, <laughs> yours is one of the bad ones that's worn out. <laughs> yeah, you're probably wasting a ton of water. 92%. Yeah. 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 We're going to get your money. Yeah. Oh my God. Most new meters are um, they registered to the gallon now, right? That's correct. Right. To the gallon. Mm -hmm. Used to be thousands and hundreds, now it's the gallon. Yeah, they're registered down to the gallon. However, um, that they have the capability of being able to program the meter that when your when your uh, receiver and the data logger records it, um, if your software billing is you know, reporting or reporting in tens or hundreds of thousands, then it can convert it. So these new meters have so much capability as opposed to the well less ones. They're very useful too. What else is out there, Fletcher, that we can do to bring our world better? 
Um, so really just no one who does the testing. I mean, you said that that group comes in, they well they do so the you, audit. You can do the so so yeah, so we have we actually do the audit. EMI does the audit. We have a certified auditor that, that completes the audit. Um, but as far as the customer meter accuracy testing, I mean I, I would recommend you you do that in house. I mean you, you, you can set up a, a system that's not that expensive to complete, um, and you start checking these periodically. In order to determine when these meters need to be changed out. Now, your larger meters, um, your four, six, and eight inch meters, I mean, you would want to have an independent company come in and do a calibration and accuracy test on those. So those are more difficult to measure because they, 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 they measure large volumes of water. Um, but what I was specifically referring to was your, just your three quarter by five eighths inch res residential meters. So we, as the city, pays you to do the audit? Correct. Mm -hmm. so Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. That was a, well, you said that was the first one, so. Uh, and Gregory, get on. Yep, and so that, that all of that list is compiled, uh, all those reports, if they haven't gone out yet, they should be going out um, to the city, and then they'll have a whole list of recommendations, and then what we do is we usually follow up um, at the first quarter of the following year to kind of see where the city is, to, to see if they're making those improvements. Um, but that, the main function is, again, to ensure that you've got procedures and policies in place to, to monitor and, and ensure that these customer meter inaccuracies are being um, corrected um, and that you're, you're, uh, you're moving forward with the testing. Um, then you have your procedures and policies in place for this type of, what was just mentioned right now about you know someone stealing water, but you have a process in place to monitor that and take care of it. And then any bulk usage. Um, if somebody wants, well, wants we get to get it directly from the hydrant. Right. And therefore, we, we had no way to detect so it. How, how do you fix yeah, so, that problem? So, well, what, what should happen, and I'm not sure if that's in place yet, but it, I, I know it was in the, the recommendations, is that you should have a bulk water use policy in place so that you have fire hydrant meters, you have a policy procedure in place, um, and it's documented, and that when somebody wants to buy bulk use, they would come to City Hall. We have that. Yep. They would fill out the paperwork. They would go to a specific fire hydrant that is designated right. for bulk usage. So, so by by designating that particular fire hydrant, then the police or anyone else would know if somebody's getting water out of that fire hydrant and they're not a, a city representative. That, that's not right. Right. Um, nobody should be doing that unless it's a a fire truck, obviously. Um, but they would have that. They would have that fire hydrant meter, and it would be it would be uh, recorded before and after. And then they're billed based on the value of that. So on these new meters, they have leak detection. Correct. On there also. Uh -huh. That way if somebody's away and their house is leaking inside, mm -hmm. you would know. Yep. Or the city would know. Mm -hmm. Well, you can look up your own yeah. mm -hmm. oh. On new meters. Yep. That's right. Yep. So by putting forth those those recommendations, then next year, and that's the goal. Once we if we have this base value now, is to Something improve or be close to where we were. If we start going the opposite way, then <laughs> then need to make uh, other changes. Yeah, I see y'all improving with everything you got going with the meter replacement program. Uh, new water lines going in. I see nothing but improvement there. Well, we don't have a, we don't, the whole town has a new system. That's what's so really good. Really yeah. good. Just in the last yeah. year, right? Now the year they came out, they did the smoke in the around the manhole covers. Mm -hmm. that is that this system. what we're doing now with the new lines? Is that going to take care of a lot of this? Well, that's the sewer portion, which we'll talk about in a minute. But okay, yeah, that's something we need to we'll also discuss. Absolutely. I think a lot of that will water going inside around the pipe and all that. Right. So additional water supply action. This is a little bit redundant here. Continue to explore groundwater resources. Um, let's flip two pages over and look at that map for Will. Those yellow highlighted areas are the ones that the um, geologists recommend if there's any possible way to concentrate on. Yellow highlighted are primary areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. The blue hatch is uh, secondary. Certainly good possibilities there as well. I know Blankenship falls in the blue. Uh, Cole Hudgens uh, falls in the blue as well. Uh, the yellow is the along the Mulberry and the Culture Project. Project. 
primarily. There's also a, you know, an island up there in the northern section of the city, and I think that's the um, old Mason property that just got rezoned for townhouses, perhaps. Up there off uh, West Jefferson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still think you could get us uh, a well site in there that would be compatible with their development. I haven't seen their development plan. Um, the biggest thing with a well, wellhead protection is you need a um, 250 foot radius out from the well is what they call the inner management zone. Um, <clears throat> there's some, you know, there's, you don't want septic tanks, you don't want sewer, there's several things you don't want in the inner management zone. And some of those can be waived, depends on what it is. Certainly don't want uh, a landfill anywhere near them or commercial septic tanks. But um, I know in the city park, we had to work with uh, Jackson County to uh, agree to, uh, when, we, when we, went, we went to develop the cabin drive well, we looked at the inner management zone and just the outer skirts of it was in one of the ball fields. They had to agree not to put pesticides or fertilizer in that zone. Right. And also to move all their gas containers out of that zone into the building of our field. So I think there's still, in all these CL properties, I think there's opportunities to get a good well or wells and still be compatible with any development. Again, in the north side where the townhouses, I still think we can find a place there to be compatible with development. Along the Mulberry, that's all in floodplain. That shouldn't have any interference whatsoever with culture. Same thing in Blankenship. And then the big one over there is the Matt property. I know we've talked to some people with the Matt family um, property uh, from time to time. But there's a lot of zones in there with the geologists on it. I don't know what those possibilities are there. But that's the, that's the four that we've got in our area. Yeah, it's a good one. Well, that Matt property is great. Right? You've got to figure, I mean, in the future, those two are most likely to stay in one three thirty two and then they might not be able to do it. Right. But there's no guarantee. No guarantee, no. No. Just got just got rolling in the back. You just gotta roll it enough till you never turns up. That's right. Hundred thousand dollars later. Right. Yep. Well, there you go. So I don't see, um, this next is kind of like a narrative. I'm not going to read the whole thing. You've seen this before. It's just kind of bring it up to our clients. Um, direct, indirect potable reuse is coming to our Northeast Georgia. I do not see Houston building a uh, indirect potable water plant anywhere in your, in your, in your future. You know, if you were projecting 10 million gallons a day or something like, like that out there. So I do see places like Athens Park County is already looking at uh, indirect potable reuse. And I think some of the bigger systems are Gwinnett County, of course, Virginia. They do a lot in Florida and do it in Arizona, but I think um, Georgia is definitely looking at that. When you say indirect, you mean recycle, reusing the water? Well, well about what's going on now. Ralphins uh, jumping in the Mulberry River and five miles downstream. I mean, we already had it. But you're going to see a lot of people doing it purposely in the, in the next decade or two. So it would be a water treatment plant right next to your sewer plant. Right. Yeah. Or within five it's miles. Right here. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, you drink the water when you use it for flushing. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. The water storage, y'all are in great shape on sites. That was one of the best things y'all ever did. In every, every community we're working in, it's always hard to get a water tank site. Uh, you've got two. Uh, of course, this first one is nearing completion. Project cost 2.4 million. South tank, you purchase that property, it's going to be a one million gallon tank on Japan Boulevard. Uh, it's in your budget to get that designed this year. Be ready to uh, pull the trigger on bidding and building it. Whatever we feel appropriate, probably looking at 3.5 million for that tank. Uh, construction 2023, 2025. So that gives you one and a half to two day storage, which is 
what's recommended. With all the connections you're going to have with all the systems, your wells plus your uh, good good amount of storage, you're, you're going to be in great shape for water. So the, the key thing I think is in our negotiations with our suppliers over the next two to six months, getting that locked down. And I think you will be able to get a longer term contract with Bear County. But that's going to be council decisions. But I think those uh, numbers will come up this year where you can make some really good long term um, decisions to uh, make sure our folks have good, good potable water and good fire protection. And speaking of fire protection, that's been improving ever since we've been there. Not necessarily what all we've done, but what we've done collectively. Um, the fire flows throughout the system have greatly improved. Um, we didn't have a fire hydrant in town that did 1,500 gallons a minute. Now we have several. Um, your, this phase one water system will put a 12 inch loop from the north tank all around the core of older portions of Houston, replacing those older um, two, four, six inch lines to be going to 12. Greatly enhanced the uh, water quality, really. Um, improved the water quality, getting away from those old galvanized and some of those old cast iron lines. Um, when, we, when we put the new tank on the line, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming we'll be filling that thing here within the next mm, <coughs> couple months, probably. Yes, sir. We disinfect it and put it online. So, <clears throat> what about our tank there on the square now? Will we still be using it temporarily? No. The only, if you do, you'll be, you'll still, you're, you're, you have two zones now. The whole north side of uh, uh, Houston feeds off the Bridleton system. All the subdivisions to the north, basically, of, um, Mr. Lawson's uh, place there, everything north of there is a totally on Bridleton. Everything's valved off. Everything to the south is fed by Jackson County. And it's still on the uh, old tank. If we decide to go to one zone and go exclusively on 1085, all your water will come through Bridleton and you'd be on one zone. And pretty well preclude getting, you'd be getting very little again from Jackson County. Okay. So there's really no need, even if we, well, of course, if we build that one, we could easily build the one on the square because it's high. Mm -hmm. But if we kept getting water from Jackson County, we would fill this one three quarters to the full, your seven new, eighths full, something like tank, that. Yeah. Your new tank would pretty well ride off Browson, just stay full. You know, you go up and down like Browson kind of cool. And you'd be your north side um, customers off, off just that one tank. Uh, if you had a fire, you could turn a valve and push that water to the south side. Or you can put an automatic valve. It's really going to depend on who we wind up getting water from. But that's the big, big key right there. Yes, sir. Well, we thank you and Gary Hesperson for having new water tanks. And Gary, as soon as he came to town, that was the first thing he said is, where's your other water tanks? Yeah. And then we're like, what are they? Yeah, that, that decision we'll need to um, collectively make some decisions on. Pretty, pretty quickly. You can ride just like you are for a while. And again, that one new tank will be just serving the north side customers. Uh, you, put a, you could put a control valve in that would, if this tank ever starts getting low, it can feed water from the north to the south. You do that. <clears throat> but once you make a decision where your, your main supplier is going to be, then we'll start looking at where we're going to put a booster summoning station. Uh, to boost that water up to get to 1085 and then we'll have to uh, we, we we're constantly doing what we call a hydraulic model of your distribution system and you can basically synthesize everything going on you can assign a value of how much everybody's using in different zones you can also synthesize your well pumps coming on filling the tanks what's coming in from jackson county what's coming in from Robinson. Um you pretty well pinpoint anywhere, any point in the distribution system, how much fire flow you have at that point. Um, the one thing we've just finished is, is what, we just remodeled your system, what the new 12 inch loop is gonna do throughout. It's gonna greatly en enhance the um, pressure flow everywhere, especially if you're riding on 1085. You mentioned pressure. Mm 
So we all know that this new tank is going to get us better pressure. You know, the average homeowner in there, we've all got the pressure control devices, but how easy is it going to be or how, how quick do we, will you notice that right off the bat as soon as that thing's full? You gotta, you're going to have to probably adjust your, your, your water pressure valve. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're um if you're on the north north zone and you, you keep it you keep two zones, there won't be really any significant change at all. Once you get on one zone, ten eighty five, um, everybody's pressure is gonna raise up in the in the south side anywhere from ten to twenty psi higher in the south. Because there's some areas down there in the higher reaches that only have about thirty five, forty psi. Yeah, those guys slower down there in the river and I talked to them. Now that'll get higher down there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'd say the same on the north. You will. You're already there. You will. Yeah, right. the same pressure. Mm -hmm. You will. Uh, one that's already there. So, west surface, would he say the same? Yeah. The water pressure? Mm -hmm. The northern sections, Bryant Park, um, anything north of uh, Mr. Lawson's place. But it'd be good to get everything on one zone. The other thing that may have to happen once we uh, we'll, we'll remodel it right now, it looks like you may have to uh, change the uh, pumps a little bit of your wells to pump up higher. But your friction loss in your bigger pipes may offset most of that. But the big thing is who's going to be our big supplier? And where are we going to put our booster pump? Once you get that figured out, everything else will work out. What? I think that it could be in the next 30 to 45 days easily. Got a picture of flipping the switch. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to be in front of that and flip the switch and turn the faucet on. I know I had on my counter for the longest time it wouldn't even fall. So that's, that, that was the schedule. Yeah, well, that's right. Once they got equipment, boy, they oh, went to town. Yeah, they, they did a great they job. Got pieces of metal and they, they went to it. So Jackson County hadn't given us an, an updated contract, so no. do we call and ask for one, or what, like what's the deal there? I think um, Booster needs to meet with um, Jackson County. Whenever we get a meeting, get a meeting we just need to talk. Uh, of course, you got the new um, general manager, Joey Leslie. Um, Joey's a good guy. Um, He's from Utah. Yeah. Where's he <coughs> Joey Leslie. But yes. Jennifer, I was told he was like. Because he's from the Bishop Jackson. Yeah. And he came to last count. It is, yeah, yeah. Huh. And the water per gallon is the same, whether we buy from Browson, whether we buy from Jackson County. Oh. No. Well, today it is. It's very simple. It's the same price today. A cost is, right? right? A cost per thousand in Jackson County versus Braston is the same. Yeah. I, I, I thought Braston was a lot higher. I have my thoughts, yeah. If they're higher, I mean, it's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just a couple of years. But yeah. I don't know which one. Right. It's in the same ballpark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. enough to make a big difference right. out of it. So that's got to be determined pretty quick. Yeah, I think there's a clause in there. It just continues to go until renewed. Right. But I'm talking about putting the booster pump in and, and getting water to the tower. That needs to be, once we determine where we're going to get our primary water supplier, then we'll start working on the booster pump. I think we, the money we've got, we've got plenty of time to do that. I think we have to spend the money by the end of 20, 2026. We won't talk to both of them. Sure. So I'm saying we can go ahead and move on with this meeting with Joey. Sure. While we're waiting on those numbers, those sure. rates from Jerry Fulton. Did they name any manager or what the? I think he had a manager. Who, who did? They did make him the. Joey? Yeah. He took Eric Clark's place. Did he? He did. He was in there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think they did make some names. 
I think so. It goes yeah, I don't know it. When, when Jackson County won it, first came online, the CD of this just sold Jackson County on it. Yeah. That's hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, they had no source. Yeah. They had no source. They, they sold it one. It's that was back when I was on council. Hey, how long is that? Thirty something years ago. And that's when we connected to Winder. And we were buying water from Winder using our well, which really supplied the town. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then Jackson County needed water, so we were brokering water from mm -hmm. Winder through yeah. us, Jackson County, yeah. and making, I don't know, a nickel a gallon, a gallon, <laughs> a gallon something like that. But Thank all you. we had to do was turn the valve. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Station again, just tell you know, tell him, you know, just lay the cards up. Do you have any suggestions on where to put the booster pump? If we, if we pump in Jackson, we would, um, we've got a little space next to that. I know this sounds weird, but it's right next to the wastewater pump station on Amy Industrial. There's room for a um, booster pump station right there. We talked about putting it on the wastewater plant, which would have to run a 12 inch pipe all the way into the plant and then pump back into the system. We put it on AV Industrial, that cuts the pipe really way down. But if we uh, primarily get from Barrow, we put it over there on Cover Bridge on Beach Street, right there at the river. That cut our purchases down from, from Jackson County substantially. Whatever you want to do, I'm fine either way. That's up to y'all. I didn't have to your brain. Do you want more cookies? You got left in your I already had cookies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know if y'all want to take a minute break. Go to the restroom or just stretch your legs. I'll just get up and stretch every now and then. No problem. Let's take five minutes. Okay. okay. Sounds good.